I want to start out by saying that if you're here because you want to make a serious power supply, you're in the wrong place. If you are that person, go look up DC to DC switching controllers on a site like DigiKey or Mauser. They'll give you a more professional design than what I'm about to suggest. But if you're like me and enjoy coming up with various ways to make control circuits without these specialized components, then hear me out. Jewel Thieves have a pretty clever feedback system. Initially, there will be some current through the base of the transistor. This allows current to flow through the primary coil. This current through the primary coil increases the feedback voltage, which increases the base current, which increases the maximum allowable primary current. So we have a positive feedback loop which turns the transistor on. After some time, the inductor is charged, and now we need the transistor to turn off. There can be a few reasons why the transistor turns off, and one possible configuration is to have the magnetic core saturate. When this happens, the flux linkage between the primary and feedback coils can drop and cause a smaller feedback voltage. Another possibility is that so much current will be pulled through the primary that the input voltage drops, and this reduced primary voltage causes a reduced feedback voltage. The third option is my preferred method of setting up Jewel Thieves, and involves picking a base resistor that sets the maximum primary current. A typical graph of current gain versus collector current looks something like this. If I want my Jewel Thief to draw this much current, then I know the associated gain. Now I can calculate the amount of base current I want, but I still need three more things to decide on a gate resistor value. I need the feedback voltage, the base emitter voltage, and the supply voltage, but these are all easy enough to come by. And once I have them, I can calculate the resistor value by doing something like this. While the inductor is charging, the primary current will eventually reach the collector current that we just chose. When this happens, the collector emitter voltage of the BJT will increase, which decreases the primary voltage, which decreases the feedback voltage, which decreases the base current, which increases the collector emitter voltage even more. So now we have a positive feedback loop to turn the transistor off, and now comes the part of the Jewel Thief circuit that I like the most. If we've set it up right, the feedback voltage will be negative until the inductor is fully discharged. This keeps the transistor from switching back on until the discharge cycle is complete. However, if the output voltage is low, then the reverse voltage on the feedback coil will also be low, and in some cases, this can stop the circuit from oscillating and potentially damage its components. What I want is something that latches off until the inductor is discharged, but also will continue to oscillate if the output is shorted. I think I'll call it the Jewel Thief 2.0. I'll start out with a TLC 555 timer, because I can't think of a more obvious way to make something oscillate, and because I want the reset pin on it. You'll see why in a minute. Let's set it up in a stable mode, and feed its output into a transistor connected to the primary of the flyback. But instead of using a BJT, let's use a MOSFET and include a driver. I didn't realize I needed that until I had built the board and was choosing components. It took a pretty ugly band-aid to make the MOSFET drive work, so make sure to include a proper drive if you're going to need a MOSFET. But now we have a flyback converter that would work. It's just pretty terrible and doesn't resemble a Jewel Thief at all. Let's use the reset pin that I mentioned earlier to keep the timer off while the inductor is discharging. Now we have something that resembles a Jewel Thief, but it's better than a Jewel Thief because it'll continue to oscillate even if the output is shorted. I'm not done yet though because I still want voltage control. If I put an op amp and a MOSFET here, then when the feedback voltage goes above the set point, the MOSFET will keep the capacitor from discharging. This makes the circuit shut off until the feedback voltage goes below the set point again. I'm pretty happy with that, so now it's time to put it in copper. Alright, moment of truth. First time powering up this circuit, I've got that power supply set to output about the voltage of a 9 volt battery and limited it to 250 milliamps, just because that's more than I think I'll need, but not so much that something's going to blow up if it goes wrong. And I've got the oscilloscope watching a whole bunch of stuff that we're only, only going to care about if something goes wrong. Well, that's not tracking at all. Look at that. So channel two 
is, is not the output of this potentiometer, it's the voltage divider from the high voltage capacitor. So it looks like my control loop's working. So channel two is five volts per division, so there we've got it at five volts. The gain is like 133. That's pretty decent voltage output. Actually, the gain's slightly higher since I'm loading it with the oscilloscope probe. Let me account for that. Gain of 143. Let's measure channel two. Vertical. The average, that sounds like the one I want. 6.4. Which, I mean, is going to be thrown off a little bit by these spikes, but probably not a lot since they look so brief. So 6.4 times our gain. 917 volts. Should work for the most part. For now, I'm going to call that a success. Well, thanks for watching. If you like that video, maybe check out one of my others. Otherwise, you can just listen to an inductor squeak.